Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, friends and colleagues from across the world. Uh, welcome to our first point in our session of today with uh, a special edition guest, uh, Dr. Edward Zuckerberg, uh, hosted by Dr. Emily Latran. Thank you for joining us. Great to be here. Good morning, everyone. So today uh, we are going to be uh, covering uh, social media for healthcare professionals. It's a very important topic that differentiates us and exposes us more to the local markets um, and uh, very, very uh, important part of business today as the whole spectrum has changed. Before we get into the presentation, a um, couple of housekeeping stuff. Um, we will have a, a second webinar tomorrow morning. Uh, about mental health with Dr. Kyle Stanley. Um, the nomination process for the World's Top 100 Doctors just recently closed on the 5th, and we will be making announcements on January 1, 2021. Furthermore, um, if you guys recall that we did the Global Interdisciplinary Summit this year with uh, the vast majority of the Top 100 from last year, was a grand success and that success came as a consequence of leveraging social media and our peers across the world with complementary education that uh, uh, permits them to not only improve their acumen, but also help uh, uh, hopefully hundreds of millions of patients out there. And that was made possible to the platform that uh, 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 Dr. Zuckerberg's Sun actually uh, uh, invented, and uh, uh, this was not possible, uh, say, 20, 30 years ago. And Dr. Zuckerberg has been practiced for over 30 years, so he has seen it come and go, the changes in technology. He's actually the absolute right person to, uh, to discuss these topics with our colleagues. And uh, I urge all of our friends to uh, really tune in and, uh, and uh, listen to what he has to say on the presentation. And furthermore, you guys know Dr. Latran, the best mom in the world. She uh, is also heavily involved in entrepreneurship and uh, speaking arrangements and coaching, and uh, the list is rather long. But with that said, uh, um, I'll uh, go ahead and have Emily make a formal introduction of Dr. Zuckerberg so we can all uh, have a little background. And uh, we shall see you hopefully in the QA session. Thank you, Dr. Zuckerberg. Well, thank you, Dr. Shah. Well, it is my absolute honor to welcome Dr. Zuckerberg to our partner this morning. Dr. Zuckerberg uh, is a graduate of New York University College of Dentistry in 1978. He's a DDS FAGD. He owned his own practices in Brooklyn and Dobes Ferry, New York from 1979 to 2013 and has always been an early adopter of technology. He introduced his first PC in the office in 1986 and completely fully networking his home base office with broadband access in 1996. Dr. Zuckerberg's early adoption of technologies include digital radiography, CAT CAM and creation of a paperless office, caught the attention of industry leaders who enlisted, enlisted him into lecturing, writing articles and beta testing many new technologies. The advanced technology in the home helped launch his son, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, interest in computers. With his wife of 40 years, Karen, a retired psychiatrist, they have three daughters also, Randy, former marketing director at Facebook, and now CEO of Zuckerberg Media. Donna, who received her classics uh, PhD at Princeton, and is now an author and editor of the online publication, Edelon, featuring a modern way to write about the ancient world, and Ariel, who is partner in a financial firm in San Francisco, as well as seven grandchildren. Dr. Zuckerberg now regularly lectures nationally and internationally on technology integration, social media marketing, and online reputation management for dentists, and he consults privately with dental practices and advises dental and medical technology startups in addition to treating patients part-time in Palo Alto, California. Dr. Zuckerberg authored the chapter on social media on the ADA's recently released Practical Guide to Internet Marketing. Dr. Zuckerberg, I'm so honored to, to welcome you to our show today, and how are you doing today? Uh, great to be with you, Emily. Um, 
enjoying the weather that turned a little cooler suddenly <laughs> here in California. And uh, after a rough battle with some fires uh, a month or so ago, uh, things have been thankfully pretty quiet where we live recently, although there have been some areas popping up that have still been problematic, but we got some rain overnight, so that's a great thing. Yes, yes, I'm in Southern California and it's um, and it's been raining. So, you know, I was just thinking, where was the rain when, <laughs> when all these fires were going yeah. on? You know, I always admire the doctor who, who have been around for a long time and um, especially those who always adopt new technology, uh, forward thinker, and, and you're certainly uh, one of those people. So can you tell me, uh, obviously as a dentist, we get very, you know, we, we can get a little bit technological and detail oriented and all that. What, what trigger your, um, you know, your interest in, in adopting early technology? You know, it's hard, it's hard to put a finger on it, but I think that um, there's a certain kind of out of the box visionary thinking that you know, when, when, when different people see different technologies, it hits them in different ways. You know, for me, right. for example, digital x-ray, okay? Um, I first, my first foray into digital was actually photography. I was, uh, photography was also a big hobby of mine. And um, back in the late 90s, I think it was 98, um, Sony came out with uh, uh, their first digital camera. It was a Mavica. It was one megapixel. Um, the device used three and a half inch floppy disks. It held 14 okay. images. And, and I remember a family trip to Europe um, where instead of film, I carried around a box with like 15 floppy disks. And, uh, okay. you know, to me as a photographer, not ha you know, it, it was always a trying period of time when you mailed in your roll of Kodachrome and, or, or prints and waited, you know, breathtakingly for the images to come back. You know, did I overexpose, right. underexpose, you know, yes. sharp focus, you know, how they come out. Um, the instantaneity of digital changed yes. all that, right? Um, yes, yes. So, so when, when the technology came out, to do that with digital x-ray around the same time, 98, 99, um, I, I kind of jumped in. But you know, when I look at the technology, I see different things or saw different things than other people saw back then. For me, one of the most frustrating things for me was knowing what the patient needs, yet being unable to fully convince them um, that to go ahead with treatment, and, and you know, I considered myself above. I consider myself above average with ability to communicate, explain the need and the reason for treatment and whatnot. And and I and I really tried to, you know, have empathy and, and not over push. I, I would not, by any stretch of the imagination, consider myself to be an over aggressive dentist. Um, I had you know, young patients that had bad teeth, you know, maybe had lots of large, oversized amalgams. And, you know, they were aware that at some point in time, you know, they were going to need more work on these teeth. But I, right. I hated to push young people with large pulps into full coverage restorations prematurely. Um, one young man went off to college and I guess he had a problem with a wisdom tooth and found himself in the chair of a dentist in Denver. And the dentist took out his wisdom tooth, but also told him he had to have eight crowns immediately or he was going to lose teeth. You know, right. a, a little bit of an alarmist approach. That was never me. Um, yes. But on the other hand, um, it would be frustrating to have a tooth like an oversized amalgam restoration with a lingual craze line mm -hmm. and not being able to really explain to the patient or, or convince them that they had to have this done. Now, one of the first technologies I put in place in my office in the late eighties was an AccuCam camera. And, and I found the ability to take pictures of things like cracks and um, small right. problems in the mouth uh, beneficial to the patient. But 
um, when it came to x-rays and showing patients things that they couldn't see with their own eyes, um, you know, we're stuck holding this tiny little film on a view box and bringing the patient over to the view box, even if you have one of those magnifying gizmos, it just doesn't do it. At least right. not, not like blowing a single tooth up to the size of a full screen on, on a large monitor that's mounted on the dental chair does. And yes, I, I, when I was first presented with the dental uh, digital x-ray option, that was the first thing I thought of is that this is a no-brainer. This is going to be a huge tool to allow me to convert, um, you know, patients who are on the fence about treatment to go ahead. When they see that carious lesion up on the screen the size of, you know, a full screen, all of a sudden it looks like a cancer, you know. And they, right. Doc, you got to fix that yesterday, you know. And, and yes. we get, we get yes. bumped up ahead of, you know, whatever – other bills had been higher than dental bills before, and now all of a sudden dentistry becomes a priority. So converting more treatment plans was the thing that hit me immediately. Now, secondary benefits, obviously lots of time savings. Uh, instead of yes. waiting 15 minutes for the assistant to mount films when they came out of the processor, um, you know, you have the instantaneity, again, of digital x-ray. And yes. uh, less radiation. You know, all these things were win-win. And yet, yes. when I chatted with colleagues back in the late 90s when I had put this digital x-ray unit in the office, I would get questions from them like, are you going to charge more for your x-rays? Are you going to take more x-rays? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to change anything I do. And exactly. they were like, how are you going to justify spending fifteen thousand dollars, you know, in nineteen ninety nine dollars um, on this new system? And I realized that dentists don't look at things and see them the same way I did. So when I started lecturing and talking to dentists, I learned the art of explaining in terms that people who didn't weren't quite blessed with the vision that I had of the benefits of technology could understand them. Yes, and, and as we were chatted, uh, chatting a little bit earlier, um, I have said that you know, you're such a, a forward thinker in adopting all of these new technologies and having that, that vision that you know, this is gonna ultimately help the practice, right? It's not, it's not just you're spending the a certain amount of money and, and definitely making the ROI back uh, from from being able to diagnose more treatment, uh, creating that urgency and presenting the, those options to the patient, but it's about standing out as that one office that has that particular technology. Because even where, where I'm pra uh, where I'm practicing, patients sometimes come in and say, "So where's your newest toy?" And yeah. and it's not so much that I. It, it, I'm into the toy. It's, you know, I got the digital technology. I got the iTero when it first came out. And, and I remember looking for a lab. Uh, there were only two labs back then in Southern California that would take the case. So I sent the case across the country. So, um, you know, I, it, it's actually my honor to invite you to come on here. And we're going to be talking about social media, which to me is another part of technology that some of us are not quite fully embracing. Uh, sometimes it's the mindset that, you know, I don't want, I don't want too much exposure out there it, because it all depends on your, your impression of you know, what you put out there, what it means and how you can leverage it. So I'm so happy that you're going to be sharing your expertise in this. And obviously um, you, you got some help at home. <laughs> you got, you got Mark at home. So you're, you're, you're miles away, uh, you're miles ahead of us. So please oh, take the so floor. <laughs> it was a side benefit of having uh, a, a home-based dental office. And, you know, at some point in time, um, we, we were using the Internet for quite a few things in the office back in the uh, early to mid-90s. We, yes. we were doing a lot, uh, insurance claim processing, credit card processing, patient eligibility verification. And we were always on the cutting edge of things that were available immediately to us. Um, 
in non-traditional formulas. And at, at some point, my staff noticed that between 3.30 and 5 o'clock, the end of our workday, that it was much harder to complete tasks um, that they were able to complete in the morning. And I realized the kids came home from school and, and would log on to America Online and tie up our internet access. I mean, America <laughs> Online dial-up was the yes. only way to get on the internet back in the yeah. 93, 94, 95. So I went ahead and, and made the plunge and wired the house for broadband um, and put in a T1 line in the house so we could all have broadband. And, and one particular night, I think it was in 94, which would make my son about 12 at the time. And I had had a, uh, a rep in the office from Comlight that day. Um, Comlight is one of these uh, systems of strips of color, different colored light right, buttons. Right, right. Um, you know, we, you know, to improve communication. To communicate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and I was explaining it at dinner, you know, which one of the, another perk of having a home office is we always right. had family together and we all shared something about our day and I'm sharing this new technology that I was excited about and my son looks at me and goes do they have to drill like holes through your walls and or go through the you know the the ceiling to wire all the different rooms for these things and I'm like yeah uh -huh. I mean there was no such thing as wireless technology right. back in the <laughs> And he goes, well, why would you want to do that? You already have computers in all your treatment rooms. He goes, I could write you a program that your rooms could talk to each other. Um, so he did. And, and the first- And this is at 12 years old? He was 12, yeah. The first, <laughs> what have you, social network was born <laughs> in, in our home. We called it ZuckNet. And- um, <laughs> You know, when the hygienist was ready for an exam, she would type me a little message and I would, a little window would pop up on my screen that, you know, my hygienist is ready for exam. And, and, and by the way, the message would say, I think, take a close look at number 30. I, I you know, prepared the patient that <laughs> she should, probably should have full coverage on that too, you know, that I kind see. of thing. So right, uh, right. message from the front desk, you know, uh, your, your three o'clock is here and he's pacing the floor, you know, something like that. <laughs> Um, that's what so, that's really really wonderful yeah so um, yeah. you know those are some of the perks of having uh you know a computer whiz in the house and and certainly having access to a network of computers um, and broadband gave him a little bit of an edge over his peers well i'm certainly thankful that he has all those advantages from from his great dad so please uh take the floor and um Share with us your presentation, Doctor. Okay. Wow, Dr. Zuckerberg, that's Dr. Latron. Amazing stuff. You have already, you're very much liked. There's over 200 uh, shares going on uh, so far. So let's keep uh, motivating our colleagues. I'm going to go ahead and. Okay, I hope you can all see my screen now. Um, how to use Facebook now to promote your practice. And I want to show you a, um, a little slide. Hopefully you can see it. You don't have to memorize this, although those at home who want to, uh, you know, screenshot, feel free. Um, to, to really understand Facebook marketing and social media marketing in general, you need to understand the quirks of each different social media platform. In the case of Facebook, um, we have two different uh, profiles that you can create. You can create a personal profile for yourself and a business page for your dental office or whatever small business you happen to be in. Um, there are similarities in the way they look, but there are very important real differences in what you can and can't do. Um, the first thing to note is that a personal profile is a two-way connection in that someone has to send someone else an invite, and then the person who's being invited has to accept in order for the connection to exist on a personal profile basis. 
With the business page, we don't want that. We want it to be real easy for people to connect with our business. So it's one way. All they have to do is click the like button or the follow button on our page, and they're connected to our practice. And we want that for a variety of reasons that we'll discuss. Um, on a personal page, you can control who sees your content. On a business page, everything is public. Again, we want that. We want as many people to see our content as possible. And then when it comes to advertising, we want to be able to focus on some segments of our um, population as well. Um, being able to po uh, promote or boost the post. Scheduling posts in advance is another great thing, feature of a business page that I love to use and have staffs get their um, get all the employees of a dental office involved in the process of creating content for their page. And this means often scheduling posts in advance. So if a staff team uh, member is assigned to do posts on every Monday, for example, for an office, um, rather than wait until Sunday night or even the day of when there's other more important things going on in the office that are going to occupy their time, they can create their content in advance for all the Mondays in a given month when they are uh, have you know the motivation or you know the the ideas and concepts to do their posts. Um, the ability to get check-ins in your office is something that has been around forever in Facebook. Probably, in my mind, the most underutilized feature, and something I'm going to talk about a little more. So understanding what the newsfeed is, um, when someone logs into Facebook, the newsfeed is the place where they are taken. It's, so to speak, their own personal um, newspaper or digital newspaper that has content from other friends that they like, businesses that they like and follow, and yes, of course, ka -ching, there's also some advertising in there too. Um, but if you are using Facebook properly, the, and Facebook is um, evaluating what you like, what you interact with, hopefully the content you're seeing are going to be your closest friends, uh, the businesses that you like and interact with, and advertising that theoretically is meaningful to you and uh, involves an interest of yours. So these are just some of the features that Facebook uses to determine what content you do see, um, how well you know the person. You know, obviously you, you like the business. If you interact with people and engage with people or business content, you're going to see content from those pages more often. Uh, if you're someone who likes watching videos on Facebook, Facebook can... Uh, read that with their algorithm and they'll feed you more videos. If it's someone you recently became friend with, Facebook will try and promote the relationship and give their content an initial boost. Um, and then friends that you may not see or pages you may not see their content that often, but if a page has a particular type of content that's getting a lot of engagement, then more of the fans of that page will see the content than would normally otherwise. And then last thing is, did, if in the case of a business page, did they pay? Did they boost the post or pay to have an ad seen by more people? So these are all factors which are going to determine um, what you see. And, and when you think from an advertiser's point of view, because that's where I'm driving at here. I want you to understand this because as a dental business owner, you are a potential advertiser and someone who wants to get more content in there. All of these items here are in there to try and create the most meaningful experience for the Facebook user. And from the company's point of view, we should understand that Facebook knows it's in their interest to have people. I, I think the average user on Facebook is on for something like 22 minutes at a clip. Um, 
it's to their advantage, obviously, to have you be on as long as possible. Because the more, the longer you're on Facebook, um, the more your data and information you're consuming, the more advertisers' ads you're seeing, and that translates into a more positive experience for you and more money for the company. So let's talk about the check-in. So here is a photo of a flaming chocolate torch that I experienced at uh, one of the Maureen Moto restaurants. This particular one was in Las Vegas a couple of years ago. And I noticed during our meal that a lot of people were ordering this dessert. You can't help but miss it. It comes by uh, with this ball of chocolate on fire. Everybody's staring. And I noticed that everybody's also pulling out their cameras or their phone cameras, not just the people who are getting the tort, but as they go by, people are taking pictures. So what I did here is essentially what a lot of other people did the same night. I snapped a photo. I checked in at Morimoto Las Vegas, and I posted it on my Facebook page. And there was a lot of interaction. If you look on the bottom, um, you'll see the like sign, you'll see the woe sign, and you'll see the love sign, and something like 65 of my friends engaged with the post in a very short period of time. So what is this? This is obviously a free um, business promotion for Morimoto. Um, a lot of people were inspired by this, said, that looks great. I can't wait to go and have it. So as a thinking dentist and translating this beyond what it is simply here, um, our challenge is why don't we get people to check in at our dental office? Now, most of us are saying, well, why would anyone check in at a dental office? Well, think about the reasons why they check in or why I checked in at Morimoto Restaurant. It was a really cool picture to share with my friends. And I really enjoyed the chocolate tort too. So did my wife. Um, so I'm sharing something good with my friends that I think they will enjoy. Um, another reason to check in might be a perk. So here's an example. Um, back in, I want to say, 2012, um, when I was still running and owning my office in Dobbs Ferry, New York, but transitioning out to California, I spent a lot of time on the West Coast. And Facebook pages for offices were really pretty much in their infancy. Um, the, Facebook, the Facebook for Business page feature rolled out in 2008. In 2010, Howard Ferran, the uh, founder um, of Dental Town magazine and the Dental Town chat website, um, approached me in 2010 to write an article for Dental Town. Uh, Does my office need a Facebook page? So obviously, right now, here we are 10 years later, and the question is not do we need a Facebook page, but what's the best way to use it? And ironically, the check-in was something that was outstanding back then and is still an amazing tool now. So what happened here? We used to get these cases. Actually, it was a single case of Aquafresh toothpaste, 36 one-ounce patient samples. And they wouldn't last too long. I would generally... Um, we, my hygienist would claim the box. We had a little goodie bag that she would give her patients at the end of the visit that usually had a, uh, uh, an engraved toothbrush, maybe some dental floss, and, and the first 36 patients of the month also got a one-ounce tube of toothpaste, right? Nobody really thought much, of any, thought much of it. On this one particular occasion, though, the poor UPS guy, and I say poor because our office was up a lot of steps, and he brought in 100 cases of the toothpaste. Somebody hit some extra zeros at the Aquafresh sample um, department. 
Um, anyhow, here we are faced with the dilemma, and my receptionist is on the phone with me. I'm in California, and she wants to borrow my basement to store all these boxes. And I didn't rather envy the concept of cluttering up my basement with boxes of toothpaste. So I said, well, what, rather than do that, why don't you start calling local churches and synagogues, they sponsor midnight runs, and the homeless would be more, it would be a great way to, you know, distribute the toothpaste to the homeless people. Hung up the phone and called her back immediately and said, hold back some of those cases and let's do a check-in promotion. Let's try and incentivize people to check in at our office and let their friends know that they're here. And all they've got to do to check in is um, make a Facebook post and mention that they're at Edward Zuckerberg's office. And we're going to give them a case of toothpaste to do that. 36 of those. One? Okay, one is kind of cool, but 36? That's like awesome. Those are like perfect for traveling. And like with a case of 36, you're like set for toothpaste for vacations for life. And sure enough, as you can see on this slide, 42 people grabbed that offer. So um, they went like hotcakes. And what happens? Let's talk about what happens when someone checks in. When someone checks in at your office, it's unlike content that you post on your own Facebook page. When you post on your own Facebook page, that content is only visible to the people who already like or follow your page. It's a very narrow, limited audience. And because of the newsfeed limitations that I discussed on the previous slide, there's a lot of competition for which of our content actually gets seen in the newsfeed. So um, organically, organically means without artificially promoting a post by paying to boost a post, we can roughly expect that our typical content will only be seen in the newsfeed of about 5% of our fans, just because of the explosion of content being poured out to Facebook um, by other people we know and businesses we like. So if your office has been really successful with their Facebook page and has like a thousand fans who like the page, only about 50 of them are going to see that post. You would love the other 950 to see. But more importantly, you would love the friends of the people who are fans of your page to see content. And that's what happens when someone checks in. When they check in, this post will not, the check-in does not appear on your office Facebook page. Yet the mention that your uh, patient is in your office gets mentioned to their network of 250 friends. That's the average. Uh, there are people with thousands of Facebook friends, and there's grandma who maybe has connected with a few of her high school buddies and her grandkids and may only have 20 or 25 friends on Facebook. But an average, 250. So um, getting someone to check in gives you exposure. I mean, after all, what the person who sees their friends check in at your dental office doesn't know they got a free case of toothpaste. For all they know, what it sounds like is they are screaming to their friends, hey, I'm at Edward Zuckerberg's dental office, and you should be there too. It's obviously a word-of-mouth recommendation that our patients are giving us without thinking about. Okay, and just the power of getting them to check in essentially is exposing us. So what we're doing here is we are amplifying the voices of our existing customers. And I love to tell a true story about when uh, being in a home-based office, I had rigged a phone system that the dental office phone would vibrate very lightly in a phone that we had tucked in the headboard of our bed so that if I happened to be up or in my uh, bedroom resting or reading or whatnot, I could actually hear a phone, but it wouldn't disturb us if we were sound asleep. 
Well, one particular Saturday night, uh, about 3 a.m., and I don't know, my wife or I had just gotten up to go to the bathroom, so we were both either up or very lightly asleep, and lo and behold, the phone rang. And I answered it. I think I flipped the patient out. I think they expected either a machine or a answering service, like, is this the doc? Yep, you got me. Well, in about 30 seconds, I ascertained that this was a true dental emergency. I mean, the guy was saying things like he looked out the window and he only lived on the second floor, and he was afraid if he jumped because the pain was so excruciating that he would only break some legs and it would make things worse. Um, he described a face that was distorted, and sure enough, I said, okay, come on in. He lived in town. Um, 15 minutes later, I'd thrown on jeans and a T-shirt, and I saw him in the office, immediately confirmed with a fast X-ray, um, a non-vital abscess on one of his lower molars. Uh, the tooth was obviously dead as a doornail. I didn't even need to anesthetize him. I put on a brand new number eight round burr, went right through the occlusal of the molar, and in about 10 seconds, I had a stream of uh, purulosanguinous purulo discharge. Um, for non-dentists out there, that's blood and pus. Um, and the patient, you could see the pressure in his face and a look of relief occur within moments. This was the patient who, over the next 10 years, referred 50 patients to our practice. That's how referrals happened in the 80s and 90s. Satisfied customers telling their friends about you. But most patients didn't run to tell people. Zach did. 50 patients, 10 years, that's a lot. I mean, I envisioned a scene like Zach meeting someone that he never knew before in an office or a party or something, extending his hand and saying, hi, my name is Zach. Do you need a dentist? You know, and, and I happen to have his business card here um, to help you too uh, because, you know, that internet thing won't be discovered for another 10 years, so you better call and here's his number. Um, Worst day of my dental career was when Zach moved about 10 years later in the mid-90s down to Atlanta. I miss you, Zach, if you're out there, wherever you are. Um, but the point highlights that the way we think about getting referrals has changed. And what we want to do is we want to look for the patients who we know love us. They're out there. They're in our practice. I mean, this guy obviously loves his dentist. He's missing number seven, and he still loves his dentist. Um, and when we take this picture and have a good time with him and, of course, get a release, um, we can post it on our own Facebook page. We can also share the photo with the patient. And if it's a fun photo, the patient's going to share it on his own Facebook page again. That's like the check-in. That's going to his friends, not the people who are fans of our page. Much more valuable. This dentist had a, a skill set that involved being able to squirt a three-way syringe into the patient's mouth over his shoulder while looking in a hand mirror. Okay. Um, sh again, share the photo with the patient. The patient shares it with her friends. My, my dentist is cool. I'm going to the dentist is a stressful experience. And people who are in the market for a new dentist can, um, you know, say, hey, that's, I need some of that lightheartedness in my dentist. My dentist is so straight-laced and straightforward. I can't do that. So this kind of con content we refer to as UGC, user-generated content. Okay, so user-generated content differs from content that we are um, putting out ourselves in that um, user-generated content reaches the friends of the people who generate the content. In this case, you have a patient who's gloating about his oral surgeon. Hands down, the best dentist place I have ever, ever been to. Okay, professional. Uh, fast, safe, I mean, you get it. This guy 
is promoting this oral surgery office of Mike and Bonnie Freimuth. Um, and um, in doing so, um, he's reaching out to his entire network and telling them about his den their dental office and helping promote the office. So how do we get people to check in? Um, this is a slide that shows um, a bunch of things that dental offices use to distribute uh, documents, uh, to, to distribute uh, you know goodies with their logos on it. Uh, we've got T-shirts, we've got water bottles, we've got stickers. Uh, <clears throat> toothpaste ringers, movie passes, um, garbage bags. Uh, although I'm going to focus on those garbage bags, by the way, on the bottom left. Um, those garbage bags are um, uh, essential in California. You can't go shopping without them. And uh, uh, Supermarkets will charge you for paper bags or plastic bags. So if you look at random cars in California, uh, the average car must have like 50 of these in their dental office. Uh, I, I'm sorry, 50 of these in the trunk of their car, uh, just waiting to take a handful of them into the supermarket. I'm going to relocate to a quieter spot here. So my thinking here is that people really don't need these uh, water bottles and things like that. Um, do, you, do you really think that people are checking out other people's water bottles for the purpose of uh, getting a referral to a dental office? Probably not. Um, so, but if you took all this stuff that you've probably spent a lot of money on, Okay, and you put this stuff in uh, that bag that you've already had imprinted with your name, then perhaps you can make a fairly attractive goodie bag giveaway package for, for a check-in. Hey, you want this whole bag of swag? You get a water bottle and a t-shirt and all this other stuff. And now you get the idea. Some offices are using... Uh, um, uh, Electronic toothbrushes, um, Grush is a fun one that I've discovered recently and I've been using. It has an integ integrated app that gives you feedback on your brushing technique. Um, dentists can buy this stuff in bulk for about $25, $30. And, uh, you know, if you think about the potential of reaching 250 new patients with each of these check-in and how much money you spend on uh, fruitless forms of advertising that aren't giving you any kind of return, this is the way to go. Again, be as creative as you want in terms of what you're giving away. Could be uh, one, one um, periodontal office that I'm working with down in Pompano Beach is literally next door to a Chick-fil-A and, he, and they give out uh, Chick-fil-A gift certificates um, with uh, check-ins in their office. So again, we're promoting user-generated content. Here's another tool that uh, an office of mine um, used. And most of us have a few celebrity patients in our practice. I always thought it was pretty funny that people think that, you know, well, who's the dentist that celebrities use? You know, that kind of thing. Um, they must all have so much money that they only go to the best dentists. But really, they're, they're people just like you and I. And a lot of them started small and connected with dentists. You know, maybe some of them did strike it rich now. Um, but a good dentist is a good dentist. And we all have celebrities and famous people in our practices. Um, and here, my uh, my friend Jeff Dorfman got um, actor Dean Witters to uh, pose for a picture in his office with him. And actor Dean Witters gives his dentist a hug. Female staff work for free when he visits. Now, to be honest with you, when he shared the photo with me, 
I didn't know who Dean Winters was. Um, I actually put it out there at one of my lectures. Okay, who who, who is this guy? And then um, a couple of them, not many people knew, but a couple, one of them recognized him as a guy who's in the, the mayhem guy in the Allstate commercials. And it turns out he's in, I think he's in a, a soap opera also. Um, so anyhow, you get the point here. Um, he is a way to um, motivate your patients or, or create content that creates the appearance that, hey, um, my dentist has famous people in his practice, so obviously, you know, that makes them feel good about their choice and more likely to, to check in or do something of that nature. Um, so we discussed the news feed a little bit more about it. Um, the typical content you'll see, stuff from your friends, um, family, um, in my case, the Yankees. Um, this post would hit me because I am both a fan of the Yankees and also this particular video has 400,000 views. But then every now and then you'll see stuff hit your page that um, falls into neither category. You're neither a uh, uh, friends with the person or a fan of the business. And what you will see here under the on the top left corner of the post is the word sponsored sponsored is the keyword that tips you off that someone paid facebook in order to get this ad into their newsfeed uh, or into your newsfeed as the case may be and then on top you'll also see where it says rachel masters kim limbo and eight others like guilt.com so now the business that is marketing to me and paying to have me see the content is doing a certain kind of specialized marketing that targets the content to go to people who are friends of the page, um, friends of the people who already like their page. So think back to Zach and Zach referring his friends to us. And what we can do here is we can target our marketing efforts to people who are friends of people who already like our dental office page. And in so doing, our content will be seen by an audience of people that will see the name of their trusted friend appear in the content as someone who likes your page. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is a specialized form of marketing that most dentists do not use and should be using. Uh, this is called retargeting. Retargeting is when you have a visitor to your website um, or, or other you know, vehicle of yours. You can also retarget visitors to your Facebook page. Um, if any of you have ever thought about it, you probably spend a lot of money on a website and the goal is to get people to visit your website. The reality is though, when it comes to dental offices, the conversion rate of potential new patients visiting a website um, who actually convert to become patients after they've looked at your page um, is a percentage that will appear on the fingers of one hand somewhere between two to 4% of potential new patients that visit your website actually become patients. Now, just because you don't win them over the first time, why let them slip through the cracks? Um, so have you ever noticed that if you shopped on Amazon for something like uh, a suitcase, for example, and you didn't buy the suitcase, and then later on, you're looking around on the internet, maybe you're on Facebook, maybe you're on another site, and that ad for that suitcase that you visited keeps following you around. Well, that's an example. Here's another one on Facebook. So I happened to find out about this company. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a recent uh, German Shepherd owner, and this company has an interactive ball called Playdate that has a built-in camera, and um, from work, you can call the ball, start talking to your pet. The pet plays with the ball. They can actually see your face. 
in the camera screen that's on it. Um, I thought it was a little hefty price tag for a couple hundred bucks, but on Kickstarter, um, they raised like half a million dollars. So I tried to get some impression from my friends. Um, so I went to their website and, and I created a link, um, a link post to their, uh, to their page and shared it with my friends because I thought it was pretty outrageous and I wanted to know um, if those people with pets would pay for this thing. Well, a funny thing happened here. Before I got any response back from my friends, after I posted the content, the first thing that appeared on my Facebook page was an ad for Playdate. Now, I didn't find out about Playdate on Facebook. I found out about it um, through an email from a, um, a tech startup. And yet, with literally within seconds of visiting Playdate's website, they retargeted me to try and sell me the Playdate. So how does this work in a dental office? There are two types of um, retargeting. Some people use these words interchangeably, but they're very different. Um, so retargeting is someone who's not a current patient. So they visited the website, um, but they didn't schedule an appointment. Um, and the goal is to, you know, message them. Well, how do we do that? Um, well, if they came from Facebook, we can track them with something called the Facebook pixel. If they didn't come from Facebook, um, we can have our web host provider provide us with a list weekly, at the longest monthly, weekly is best, provide us with a list that um, will be include the IP addresses of the computers or the devices that people use to visit our website. And from that list, we can create a custom audience on Facebook. Um, and then we can run a marketing campaign that will be targeted strictly to people who have visited our Facebook page. It's a way for us to keep Badgering them. We've got a live, we got live blood there. They've shown an interest in us. They know about us. They visited our page. Don't give up on them. Um, remarketing, on the other hand, is similar, but slightly different. Remarketing is geared for people who are already patients of the practice, but maybe through our uh, practice management software, we've determined that they are um, overdue. Maybe they haven't been in the office for a year or two years or whatever um, search characteristic you want to put in to track them. And your um, practice managing management system will enable you to um, do a search for email addresses or cell phone numbers of all patients who have not been in the office in X number of months. And then you can export that patient list into uh, a Facebook custom audience. Facebook will use the data you upload, the cell phone number or the email address, to match that audience to existing Facebook users and create a custom audience that you can then do a marketing campaign. So for someone, for example, who hasn't been in the office for over a year, um, this sounds like the right audience to send messages about the various known links there are between periodontal disease and whole body systemic diseases. After all, these are patients who are obviously slacking in their recall visits. So I hope I haven't inundated you with too much here. Um, Emily, this would be a great time for some Q&A. And uh, I'm happy to field any from you or from our users. All of the insights that you um, that you share, and you know, I I have to be honest with you. I love Facebook for the the fact that we can be authentic and uh, share sometimes goofy stuff, I think. Uh, because for example, I have a lot of funny signs in my office and I love it when the patient come up to the front desk and they just pull out their phone, they start taking pictures of all the funny signs 
and I would tell them it's five dollars per picture, right? And they would just laugh. And then I can see them immediately sharing that on their Facebook. And and so yeah. by the time they walk in and by you know at the front desk, I I can change their mood, right? Change their state to a little bit more relaxed. Uh, appreciate the humorous nature in our dental office because a lot of people when they come in, uh, they are so tense. And and I think you gave uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, tips on how to get people to check in because that I, I I'll admit that's one of the feature I don't do a whole lot. But I, I've seen my patient checking in all the time when uh, when they come to our office. Well, that's great that they check in. They check in without being incentivized. Then you've got a really good office. <laughs> Um, when we, when we bought our home, um, it was a very small dental office, only one operatory. Um, after about five years, we expanded it. We knocked out the side wall um, and built out laterally. Um, and where the wall had been, where there was there was a double hung window there, that was formerly a waiting room, made it into an operatory. And on the other side of the wall was another operatory. And we opted to put a 250 gallon saltwater aquarium built into the wall. So wow. the, the, fish, the fish could be seen from either operatory on either side. I see. I was would work in that operatory and I was on the other side. You know, it made the room look bigger. And, and, yes. I, and I thought about the fact that, um, yes, fish are good to allay patient anxiety. But what about dentist anxiety? I mean, we spend most of our, probably the biggest portion of our life in the dental treatment operatory. Yes. Okay, so you could have four walls or you could have some interesting art, but having a whole wall with a fish tank is really super relaxing. And yes, a lot of my patients, um, would take pictures of the fish especially yes. we had a lionfish and the lionfish would only eat live little tiny feeder goldfish and it seemed like the lionfish feeding time was a very popular time for photographs exactly i th i saw dr shah on there dr shah are you still on there do you have some do you have some comments and insights for us Yes, I was uh, very eagerly listening to the concept of actually having toothpaste uh, for the check-ins. That was really great. <laughs> yeah, might yeah. have to implement that, uh, Doc. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a clinic, and uh, uh, soon we'll have my first patient of the day. Saturdays are a big day for us, and we're doing a big crown lengthening case and an implant. And uh, my staff was actually listening in, and they're like, Dr. Zuckerberg has some, some really good ideas. Yes. Uh, so we, we uh, may be implementing some of those. Doc, what do you think the scenario is for dentists? What is the best platform? What are the advantages? I know like for, for example, we have had the greatest success by far on Facebook, but the Instagram world is coming up and then you have the old timers, uh, uh, the, the, they're playing more on the LinkedIn platform, the professionals. For, for patients, uh, um, Facebook has many, many functions that half of us don't even know about. Can you reflect on some of those uh, uh, functions as to local boosting, which are quite inexpensive to do uh, um, and targeting different age ranges and things of that sort? I found great success on Facebook, not only for my practice, also for my professional endeavors, but particularly for local patients, there are functions such as targeting people that you want in your practice and there are certain functions these functions are uh, um, when you when you start boosting for example you can say hey this is the demographic I'm looking for these are the ages I'm looking for these are the behaviors I'm looking for these are the the, the job titles even down to uh, many, many please elaborate on that a little bit yeah so I mean Facebook certainly has been around the longest and is the most robust and has the largest varied database um, of users of any of the social media platforms. Um, most dental offices don't retain a full-time media person. If they do, 
Um, and there are some progressive ones that do. Um, if they do, certainly you want to utilize all of them because they all have their strengths. Obviously, um, Instagram has more of an appeal to younger people. So I would think that if I were running in um, a pediatric or an orthodontic practice, so I had a practice geared at a lot of young families, I would want to have an Instagram page as well. Um, you know, with Instagram, it's important to have great visual content. Um, if you're doing a lot of links to interesting articles and stuff like that, um, Facebook makes the most sense. Um, but, you know, for pure pictures, people that, you know, love photographs, they extracted one of the best features of Facebook, which is promoting videos and, and pictures and, and put them on and, and, and target Instagram. Um, Regarding dental appointments, the studies have shown that the female of the household makes roughly 65 to 70% of the appointments for the whole family. So a lot of offices will do um, some split marketing campaign to have their budgets be a little more efficient. You know, if you're spending X number of dollars and you'd like to expand your reach without expanding your budget. What I've suggested to some of them do is change the gender of their marketing campaign for a while to women only because those, you get more bang for your buck because uh, reaching the woman and the family is the is going to be the one who's often the decision maker for dental appointments. So you can reach more family households for a, a smaller or same budget. Um, and then you can also think about expanding to a, a platform like Pinterest, which has a very strong female following. Um, LinkedIn would be mandatory, I would say, for any specialty dental practice that relies on dentist to dentist referrals. So all my, all my um, uh, clients that are, um, you know, dental specialists, oral surgeons, perio, whatnot, all have LinkedIn pages. You know, when you uh, – I've, I've got a periodontist. He's so gung-ho. He keeps sending me all these great pictures that he does of these graphs and implant cases, and, and a lot of them will have very technical stuff in the slide. That's not the kind of stuff we want to bombard patients with. They don't want to see uh, the procedure. They don't want to see blood. They don't want to see lacerations, sutures, things like that. Um, but on the other hand, your, your colleagues will be impressed by your technical expertise. Gotcha. I, w I, I, want, to add, I want to add that when you're, when you're promoting um, or sharing, to go where your obviously your target audience are, right? So, so you in general, all of the like the funny posts that we said earlier, things that you share that make you unique, or maybe even a new course that you took, those are things you can share on Facebook, um, on on Instagram. Uh, you know, Ortho, uh, Invisalign for teens, those kind of things, or um, some of the biological dentists have the you know anterior composite crowns. Uh, use, using, um, you know, the, their new technologies, um, composite injection crowns, put those on Instagram so people can see this can be done without anesthetic in one sitting. And then on LinkedIn, a lot of time I share articles on LinkedIn, like those articles yeah. that talk about the links with COVID and everything. That way my, my colleagues, they may not even be dentists, but they can see that, hey, Emily's reading journal. <laughs> you know, everybody's right. trying to keep up and learning. You know, and, and and I could spend the whole talk talking about doing Facebook live broadcasts. Um, right, right. Live broadcasts featuring anything from uh, showing human interest side, like uh, celebrating a staff member's birthday, blowing out the cake, or you've got a new piece of technology um, showing, you know, people off how it works. Um, I've had offices that do a lot of Invisalign, and they'll have the patient in the office 
to the final reveal, the final smile, right? And then they'll post pictures of the pre-op, um, you know, with the patient's malocclusion or, you know, crooked teeth or whatever they corrected. And now there's the patient with the great smile and the dentist invites the audience who's watching the video live to ask questions directly to the patient. Um, well, that's a great, great, and great it's, idea. It's, it's something we do a lot with our influencers. I mean, I mentioned before there are some, the average of 250 fans on a page, uh, you know, 250 friends that some people have. You know, you can pick out the people that have thousands. Okay, they don't put their phone down while they're in the office. They're texting while you're drilling their teeth. It's right. unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> and so if one of them comes to you and says, hey, you know, I'd love to do this Invisalign for six grand, but I can't afford it. And the creative dentists are understanding the influencing capability of these people. And okay. they're coming back to them, well, I can do the case for you. I'll give you special dispensation, $3,000 but I want you to pretty much live blog and put like right, right. two posts a month up of your experience in the office going through the Invisalign and then do, you know, some periodic um, videos. So uh, these are people who, who they, what they put out on their page reaches thousands of people and letting people know that this perceived celebrity uses your office for dental treatment. You know, that's like the Allstate guy that, uh, you know, that right, I, right, right. Hey, guys, yeah. uh, just a couple of quick uh, breaking news updates. Yeah. This Podinar is one of the most shared Podinars we have had since we started. It's been at 530 shares right now. As we were on the Podinar, the power of social media uh, clearly um, uh, displays itself. Uh, the United States president was selected and won. Uh, and uh, regardless of what your political orientation is, uh, this saga has uh, sort of come to an end um, as we were on the Podinar this morning uh, between Fox and CNN and other outlets that made the announcement. So multiple special uh, things have happened while we were on here. We have learned a lot about social media from one of the experts in the industry. And um, also uh, we have a, a, a very interesting thing going on today. You can expect social media of all kinds to flare up everywhere. Uh, including all of those that we mentioned from LinkedIn to Facebook to Instagram to Twitter and on and on it goes. But Dr. Zuckerberg, um, um, we really thank you for your time and agreeing to contribute uh, to this podinar uh, uh, selflessly and uh, uh, appreciate you coming on. Dr. Latron, any other questions that you might have for Dr. Zuckerberg? Yeah, so Dr. Zuckerberg, thank you again for, for spending the time with us. I know you're you're with your family and we don't want to take too much more of your weekend. Uh, just, uh, just so you know, the 530 shares are 530 shares in groups. So the the, the part in is being shared in different groups all around the world. So we we want to, to to make sure people understand how to use Facebook, and we're really grateful that um, you play a big part in that, from creating the creator of Facebook um, all the way to sharing all these insights. So I invite you to have the the very last uh, words, you any more comments and advice on how to use social media? Uh, well, always a thrill to be with you and to share my expertise. And, uh, you know, I invite people to dabble and to learn more because there's so much to learn. Um, I, I, I recommend they visit Facebook Blueprint search for it on the internet. Um, Facebook Blueprint is essentially um, a database of short videos where you can um, master different topics in short 15 minute videos at a time uh, for every facet of utilizing Facebook, both as a uh, personal user and as a business user. Well, thank you, doctor. And I also welcome dental office related social media questions on my Facebook page, Painless Social Media. Yes, certainly you've made it painless. So um, 
Dr. Shah, you want to close the, the part in our for today? Yes, uh, thank you so much. We look forward to having you. Congratulations on being nominated also amongst uh, the Doctor to Doctor uh, World's Top 100 that will be announced in January. And uh, we look forward to further collaboration. You can reach Dr. Zuckerberg on his uh, social media page for any questions as you have, as was stated. And uh, we look forward to uh, maximizing cooperation between uh, our colleagues. Thank you guys for coming on on a Saturday. I wish you a wonderful weekend and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.